What's up guys, Garrett here with Self.Dev. Today, we're gonna to talk about are you ready to start applying for jobs as a web developer and a few things you need before you start applying. So, let's get to it. <clears throat> with tech, tech is, getting a job in tech at least is not binary. Actual tech, very binary. Getting a job in tech, not binary. Because there's a lot of companies out there, they've got a wide range of needs, you've got a wide range of stuff you can study, right? So there can be a company that wants you to have five years experience in Python, five years experience in React, be an expert in basic, uh, be able to design everything yourself, be able to do handle DevOps and unit testing, QC, all that stuff. And basically do like five developer jobs in one person. And then there's companies that just want, need you to know HTML and CSS and they'll teach you a little bit from there. There's a wide range of companies, wide range of needs, right? With tech, there's not a point where you're just like, all right, now I'm ready to start applying. I don't have to learn anymore. I can get a job now. You continue to learn your whole tech career. If you're getting into this industry, you need to be aware that you're gonna be learning for the rest of your life, right? Tech is constantly evolving, constantly changing, so you're not just gonna get to get a job and then stop learning. If you do, your skills are gonna get outdated, and if you ever get let go or leave, you're gonna have a hard time finding a new job. So. If you pick this career, you're always gonna be learning. Now you're saying, Garrett, I know I'm gonna be constantly learning, but what, what's like the bare minimum I need to get a job? Well, if you're going for front end, HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript are the absolute basics you have to have before I would start applying. Um, after that, it's kind of like a continuum, right? Or like a spectrum, right? Um, if, you know, on this side, you have very unlikely to get a job, and then on this side, you have very likely to get a job, right? you know HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript, you're probably, you're, you're on this end. Like, you can start applying. There's companies that'll hire you. It's just gonna take a lot of applications, a lot of time hunting for a job, but you can do it. Whereas on this side, if you got a few years of experience, it's gonna be a lot easier to get a job. So, bare minimum, HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. Now, I'm gonna have a few resources in the description if you need places to learn those. Also, I do monthly projects if you need anything to build. So go hop in the Discord, a new monthly project for February or whatever month you're watching this video in. Uh, so stuff to practice with. Now, one mistake I see a lot of people make is they will kind of just glaze over HTML and CSS and they're like, all right, I know this, and then go to JavaScript, glaze over vanilla JavaScript and just hop into like React or Vue or Angular or some kind of JavaScript framework or library. And they don't really have the basics down. So you do need to make sure you get the basics down, like the, the vanilla CSS before you use any like preprocessors or anything like that, and even like CSS before you go into JavaScript, and then vanilla JavaScript on its own. We have a lot of people that come in for interviews and they can't, they basically fail our button test where we're like, hey, code us a button, put it in these places, give it these styles, and it's crazy the different stuff people try to do to build a button. Like somebody, made a div and gave it the class button. That was an interesting one, but I'm not gonna talk about that. Uh, so yeah, make sure you get the basics down. Now, if you're gonna start applying, there are a few things you need. First one's your portfolio, uh, second one's your resume, and third one is a cover letter that helps you stand out a little bit more. I'm not gonna go over cover letters today, but yeah, that helps you stand out more. Because it's like you're putting in more effort, company knows, hey, they really want this. Because you wanna show that you're hungry. Uh, also a good GitHub. We're gonna go over that too. So this is my portfolio. Uh, it's, it's been updated a little bit since I originally started applying for jobs, but you've got like the basic little intro section. It's like, hey, I'm Garrett, I'm your next web developer. Nice little video background, which I probably need to change to something tech related. And then you've got your about me. If you, something I think would be really cool is if you had an about me video where you just kind of talk about yourself a little bit, why you wanna learn how to code, maybe answer a few interview questions just to show that you know what you're talking about. And then you've got your skills. Obviously this has been updated a little bit since I got my first job. These are like my real world projects. So those wouldn't have been there when I first started applying. Um, all I would have had are these few Team Treehouse projects right here, uh, which I highly recommend by the way. Team Treehouse, they give you like really professional projects. They give you the XD file and like everything looks good. Cause when you're applying for jobs, you've got to have projects. I'd say probably have at least four in HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. And then if you're on to like React or higher level things, have those on there too. But at least have four. 
make sure they look nice. And that's that's why I like Team Trials, because they have designers that make the projects for you and they look nice. Like, this is something I made. If it's gonna load, probably not. But this is the picture of it. Doesn't look too good, right? And this is my weather app. I designed that too. Also doesn't look too good. This is my to-do list app. I copied styles from a Team Trials project, so it kind of looks good. But yeah, make sure your projects look decent. Um, people try to look past the design if you're gonna be a web developer, but it's, it's it helps a lot more if the projects look good. So you got your project section, and then you got your contact information, right? Like your social medias, I got my YouTube linked up, and then have a button so they can download your resume. That's your portfolio, also your resume, right? Where is the other resume I had? Did I close that? No, it's right here, let's see. All right, so this is what my resume kind of looked like when I was first applying for jobs. Like I said, I didn't have any tech, I didn't have any tech experience before I got the job I have now. So this is what my resume looked like. I had my, my little intro section, I had the skills I had experience with, and this is like a template. If you want my resume template, look in the description, I will have a way for you to get it for free. Uh, and then I had my projects, I had a description of the project, the skills I used in it, and then, yeah, the skills I used in this project. And then also hyperlinked to the project so they can check it out. Because when you're applying, you wanna have your projects live, so they can look at it and see what it looks like, right? Like they wanna be able to go to the project and be like, oh, okay, cool, you can click on it, it works, it's interactive. It's not just a picture or it's not just code on GitHub. Because if you have code on GitHub, like it might not work, I don't know. And if somebody's going through hundreds of resumes, they don't have the time to clone your project, NPM install, NPM run, or basically download and run your project. You wanna do it for them, make it as easy as possible. Because this is a sales game, right? You're selling your skills as a developer. But yeah, projects, and then last, education, because I didn't have any tech-related education in, as far as college goes. If you went to college for computer science or something like that, I'd probably still put it at the bottom, actually, because I think projects, projects take precedent over education, because this is like the real-world proof, and then this is like theoretical stuff, right? Like you've watched courses and whatever. But yeah, that's the resume and the portfolio. Last I'm gonna talk about is the GitHub. Make sure you're committing to GitHub. Because this shows that you're hungry and that you want it. This is what it looked like when I was learning to become a developer. I got a job like right in December. As you can see, my GitHub commits stopped for a little bit because I was complacent and I was like, oh, I got this. And then in March, I picked it back up again and started learning more because I was falling behind. But yeah, make sure you're pushing to GitHub because that's one. Let's employers see that you're coding every day, that you're hungry, that you want this, and that, and then they can go to your projects and look at your code, because they want to be able to see that you code. If you're just applying with a resume, you don't have a GitHub, you don't have a portfolio, it's not going to be too easy for you to find a job. It's going to be really hard. You need proof that you know. I mean, you need proof that you can do what you say you're doing. So. Host your projects so people can check it out, have a portfolio, have a resume, have a good GitHub, uh, make a cover letter. I'm not good at cover letters, so I'm not gonna go into that. So long story short, there's not really an absolute of, hey, now you're ready to start applying for jobs as a web developer. There's just a few minimum things you should probably have. No HTML, CSS, vanilla JavaScript. Have a portfolio with at least four projects. Make sure the projects are live so they can click on it and go view the project also have links to your github so they can go to the github and check out the code if they want to and then have your resume and you should be set now also another pro tip if you live in a big city or even a small city go to go to meetup this is basically it's, it's what it sounds like right like there's a bunch of meetups like north texas outdoors ut dallas computer science community 20s and 30s somethings in Dallas. It's basically people who get together for a common interest. Go here, find tech meetups, and go to those and meet people. Now, if you're like me, you're shy and antisocial, hey, this is a great time to go out and try to meet people and practice your social skills, become better at that, because that's gonna be important too. But yeah, going out, meeting people, you might meet somebody that can help you get a job, that'd be cool. That'd make it way easier than sending out hundreds of resumes. So last thing, don't get discouraged when you're sending out thousands of resumes and 
you're not getting many callbacks, right? I live in Dallas. I sent out probably one, two thousand resumes over the course of the few months that I was applying. I only got, did I really only get two calls? Yeah, I only got two calls, two interviews. I got a job offer at both. Uh, the first one actually wasn't the job I went in for, but it was an internship position and they were still gonna pay me. Um, and then the second one was the job I have now. So don't get discouraged if you're not getting callbacks or stuff's not working out. Like I said, it's a continuum, right? As long as you keep learning and keep growing and are committed, it's inevitable that you're gonna get a job eventually. You might not be ready right now, um, or the company you interview with might not be, think you're ready right now, but there is another company out there that might have lower standards, or you're gonna improve and eventually, eventually meet that company's standards. And as long as you keep growing and keep working on it, you're gonna get a job. So I think that's it for today. If you want me to review your resume, look in the description, send me your email. Like I said, we got a Discord and I do projects for people if you want practice projects to come build. But yeah, I think that's it. So I will see you next time. Peace. Round one.